Hey guys, it's Matt here with Overautomate. So today I'm going to be swapping out most of the light switches in my house with GE Z-Wave smart switches and dimmers. There are tons of smart switches out there. I chose these because they were Z-Wave as opposed to Wi-Fi. And I really like the GE ones because of how their toggle mechanism works. There are actually two versions of these. The newest version has a slightly smaller box so it makes it easier to install, especially if you're installing several next to one another. I actually have a mix of both and since in this video I'll be installing a single switch, I'll just be using the bigger, slightly older version. This switch controls one of the recessed lights in my living room. It's basically a sort of security light or night light, but it's kind of annoying since it takes two switches just to turn on the recessed lights in here. Also, it should be noted that I've gone in and replaced all the light bulbs with dimmable bulbs since I wanted to be able to install the dimming switch here. So, disclaimer before I get started, if you're not an electrician or extremely comfortable with working with high voltage electrical wiring in your home, then you should hire a certified contractor to do this work for you. It's not worth risking yourself and risking burning down your house or frying all of your electronics. So with that being said, let's get started. First I'm going to cut off the breaker that controls the light switch we're going to be working on. All right, once we've confirmed that there's no power coming to this switch, we'll get to work removing it. All right, there are four types of wires that we're looking at. There's the black wire that's the load, which goes to the light switch. The other black wire, which would be the line, which provides the power. And usually in the back of the box, we're gonna have a bundle of white wires, which are the neutral wires. And lastly, we're going to have a bare copper wire that's going to be the ground wire. Now, once again, guys, I'm not an electrician, so your setup may be different, so you might want to consult the internet if you are undertaking this project yourself on making sure you know which wires are which. Now, my ground wire had some paint on it, so I went ahead and sanded it off to make sure it's got good contact. Some of the wires in the back of these old switches can be difficult to remove. For this one, I'll be pushing in on a tab and pulling on the wire at the same time. Now that I have the wires removed from the old switch, I'm going to straighten out the ends to make sure they'll easily slide into the back of my Z-Wave switch. These GE switches come with a little segment of wire that we're going to use with the bundle of neutral wires so that we can connect it to our switch. I'll make sure this is nice and tight. I have a solid connection and it won't come loose once we shove everything back into the back of the box. Okay, now I'm going to situate these wires so they line up with the back of this switch. Double check that everything's where it needs to be. And we'll go ahead and start with the line wires. One wire is coming in uh, to power the box, and then another one's probably going on to another power outlet or a switch. So we'll make sure that's nice and tight. Now the neutral wire, it's a little long, so I'm going to trim it down just so we don't have any bare wire showing other than the ground wires that may be in the box. We want to make sure it's just flush with the back of the switch. Next is our load wire, which is the light. And last is our ground wire. Once that's tight, I think we're ready to test it all out. I'm going to go flip the breaker back for that switch so it has power once again. All right, looks like our light's already on. So let me just turn it off right quick. And the light turns off. So I'll turn it back on. It's at full brightness currently. So if I hold down the bottom on this switch, it'll actually slowly dim the light. And I'm kind of doing it in increments right here. And then when I turn it off, it's off. And if I turn it back on, it goes to that last save brightness that was set, which is something I really like about these switches. All right, I've used this switch before, so I want to completely reset it. And what you just saw me do was pop the air gap on the bottom of it, which cuts power to the switch. So I'll push that back in. I'm going to click the top of the switch 10 times. This should do a factory reset on the switch. Quick side note, this is not the recommended way to do a factory reset. 
they actually say to hit the top button three times and then bottom button three times to do a factory reset, but that did not work for me. So this is a solution I found on the internet and it worked perfectly. All right, now it's time to finish installing the switch into the wall. Now, if you had turned the breaker on to test the switch before you get to this part, make sure you turn it back off just to be safe. Please do as I say and not as I do, as I forgot to do this. Now make sure the switch is level at this point and you can install the faceplate. Lastly, before we go to the Home Assistant, we're going to hit the top button once and this will put it in pairing mode for us. Alright, now back over to Home Assistant, we're going to click on Configuration, Integrations, and then Configure under Z-Wave. And lastly, we'll click Add Node to add our light switch. So while we're waiting on that to finish, I just wanted to take this moment to thank all of the viewers that are liking my videos and subscribing to the channel. Because of you, these videos are already getting thousands of views and appearing as top results in searches related to Home Assistant. Not to mention, we just hit 100 subscribers. I really appreciate all the encouragement and feedback, and I'm going to do my best to continue to improve the quality of these videos. That includes consistency in uploading these videos to begin with, and I think that would be a good place to start. So anyway, at this point, our switch should be paired, so let's go check on that. So under nodes, we're going to find our new node, and then select the entities of the node, which would be our light, and we'll click on the entity information. So this is the Home Assistant light entity, where we can turn on and off the light, and then set the brightness for this dimmer. So this would be just about full brightness, half brightness, and then uh, low brightness. Now, we can't really remember this name, so let's go ahead and go to the settings to change the name to something more recognizable. I'm going to go with Living Room Ceiling Nightlight for the name that's going to be displayed, and then for the Entity ID, which we'll use in Scripting and Home Assistant, we'll do, actually we'll do something different. We'll do Living Room Recessed Single, and then we'll name it Living Room Recessed Single Light. So we'll update that, and then refresh the entity. See if it changes the name. Looks like it's not updating here, but if we go back to overview, we can see that the name did update here. One quick thing to note, with the complexity of this dimmer and the way it saves when it's off, sometimes Home Assistant doesn't fully turn it off when you flip that switch, and turning it back on will return to that last save state, which may not seem like the light's on. So the best way to precisely control this dimmer would be to manipulate the brightness directly, which is always spot on. Hopefully there will be a fix for this in the future. I don't see this as much of an issue for me as my goal for Home Assistant is to have it fully hands off and automated. So I don't have to worry about setting these values individually. Which speaking of, we'll be using this dimmer switch as well as others I've set up around the house to create some useful automations in a video coming out in the near future. So as always, thank you so much for watching. If this video helped you out, please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel as we'll be building on our Home Assistant ecosystem with some more smart home products in preparation for over-automating.